Hello everyone, this is the first episode in a new series where I'm going to be building a 3D model viewer. So I've always wanted a program where I could run it like this and then pass in some sort of object file and then it would open up a window and show me that model and then I could, you know, add textures to it and change the lighting and stuff like that and then take some screenshots. And so because I want that, I think it would be pretty cool to make a series about this and show y'all how you can make your own 3D model viewer. So we're gonna be doing this basically from the ground up, but there are some things that I don't wanna be building from scratch. And for that, we're gonna be using the SoCal library for windowing and graphics. So if you don't know what SoCal is, it's essentially a very thin wrapper over some graphics APIs like OpenGL, Metal, and DirectX, um, which is really great because it means that we are not stuck with one graphics API after we write this program. It also provides some really nice windowing abstractions so we can open up a window in you know, Windows, Mac, and and Linux, um, so that's also really nice. And it's a very, very lightweight dependency, and it's just a couple of header files. Um, so we're gonna be using this, and I'm gonna be using the C programming language just because it's well known and widely used. Um, but you can use whatever language you want that is supported by SoCal. So there are a ton of bindings like uh, bindings for Zig and Rust and Odin. So pick whatever language you wanna use and go with that. Um, but with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the project structure. And um, for me, I like to have a couple different directories with my C projects. I like to just, I like to have a vendor directory for all of my third party dependencies. And I like to have a build directory for my final um, exported binding. So let's just go ahead and make those two directories there and then just make a main.c file at the root and make a little hello world program. I should mention that this is not a C tutorial. I do assume that you know C. Um, you don't have to be like a pro at C, but um, you know, having the basic idea of, of how to use C would be very, very nice for this project. Um, so let's go ahead and make that hello world program. So I'll include studio.h and then do an int main and return zero here, and then do a printf hello world like this. Okay, and let's just do clang uh, main.c o main and run our main file. So it looks like I can still write a hello world program, so that's all good to know. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually add SoCal as a dependency to our project. So I'm going to go into that vendor directory and then just clone the repository for SoCal into that uh, directory. And it's pretty quick because SoCal is a pretty small dependency. Um, and if we actually look at what SoCal is, it's basically just a bunch of header files because SoCal is a header only library and you just pick and choose what parts of it you want to include by just including those header files in your project. So let's go ahead and actually get a window open. Now, in order to do this, we're going to use the SoCal app header file, which provides all of those windowing abstractions that are really nice for a cross-platform windowing. So I'm going to include, and then I'm just gonna do vendor SoCal, uh, SoCal app. And then on top of this, we have to define a macro that will implement all these functions. Because if you don't know how header-only libraries work, um, in order to avoid having duplicate symbols whenever you import them um, in multiple different files, um, what they'll usually do is you have some sort of macro that you have to define above them, um, which will then implement that. And you define that macro once. So because there is this macro here and you only define it one time in your project, um, the, the functions are only defined once. So you avoid all those duplicate symbol issues. So we're gonna be defining that macro here. And I actually did forget what it was. So we had to go to so-call app dot h and look at what it is so we have so called app impl that's what we need to do so so we'll put up here define uh so called app impl like this and we have to pick a 3d api so i will go here and i will say uh, define so called and then i guess i'll do gl core so after implementing the app and then defining that we want it to be GL core, um, it's going to complain about conflicting types for main, which can be confusing, but basically SoCal app will try to hijack the main function of your application, um, which I don't like. So I'm going to be defining um, SoCal no entry, which will basically just tell SoCal, hey, let me do it on my own. We have now included SoCal app inside of our project. So now what we can do is we can just uh, call this function called sapp run, which takes in an sapp description. So we'll do an sapp description here. 
So if we look at a description here, there are a bunch of different callbacks that we need, right? So we have the initialization callback, which is what happens whenever you initialize the window. Um, and then we have the frame callback, which is just the, which is just a callback that is called every single frame. We have a cleanup callback, which is called whenever we're cleaning up the application. And then we have an event callback, which is what is called whenever there is an event, like a key press or a mouse movement or something like that. And then there's some other things about user data, but we don't need to really worry about that for now. We need to create those four callbacks here. So I'll do dot init callback, and then I'll do frame callback, a cleanup callback is just our cleanup function. And then I will do event callback, which will just be our event callback here. Now let's go ahead and implement those functions. So I'll do void init void like this, and I'll do void frame void and then I'll do void cleanup void, and then I'll do void event. But this one takes in a const sap event pointer, I believe, like this. And that should be good to go. That's a super, super minimal setup right there. And I do believe that this will run even if we don't do anything with graphics. So um, what we can do here is we can just open up a new terminal window. And what we're, we're gonna need to do is compile this, but link against the um, proper libraries that so-called uses to be able to open up this window and display some graphics. So we'll do clang main.c dash o build slash main, and then we need to link against those different libraries. So those libraries are the x11 library for x11 windowing. We're also going to need, I think the um, xi library, x cursor library, and then we'll link against a uh, gl, and then we'll do a sound, I believe. So a sound, and then we'll do dl, and the math library and let's see if that's enough okay cool so we now have our executable here let's go ahead and run it and we have a completely blank window open right here awesome okay but let's do a little bit more than just a black window let's, let's actually initialize the graphics and get some uh, background cleared on the screen um, so to do that we're going to be using the so-called graphics.h header file here and we need to initialize this in the init function so we'll do sg setup and then we'll pass in the SG descriptor here. And then we have to take a look at what this descriptor takes. So the SG descriptor takes in a bunch of different things, which most of them we don't care about, but the one that we do care about is this SG environment. Um, and this is basically just graphics API specific environment uh, data. So if we look at what SG environment is in the source, um, as you can see, we have environment information um, for WGPU and Direct3D 11 and Metal, um, and then we also have some default data so we're just we're going to need to essentially provide that data now luckily there is another header file that handles all of this for us which is called so-called glue which is essentially the graphics glue code um, to handle this we can keep things graphics api agnostic here so i can do so-called glue.h and then for environment we can set it equal to s glue environment like this and that's all that we need to add now what is created must be destroyed so inside of cleanup we need to do sg shut down and this will shut down our so-called graphics instance um, and so this is essentially just starting up graphics and shutting it down at the end of the application uh, but we're not doing anything with it yet so let's go ahead and actually get some sort of like clear color on the screen now in order to do that we're going to need to have some sort of global state that we can then um, initialize inside of init and then use inside of our frame callback so i'm just going to create a static struct that i'm going to call my state struct and then inside of here i'm going to have my pass my so-called graphics pass action which is just essentially a render pass. Um, so I'm gonna just call this my pass action like this. And then instead of init, we'll do state dot pass action um, equals a new SG pass action where we have the colors and then we set the first entry in the colors here equal to a new color struct, which has a few fields, but the ones we care about are the load action, which we set equal to the uh, load action clear like this. And then we have the actual clear value itself, which is a so-called color, which is just um, four floats. So for me, I'm going to do 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 1.0, uh, 1.0. Okay, and so now that we have our pass action um, defined, we can then use it inside of our frame function here so I can do sg begin pass and this takes in a pass not a pass action but we can just create that pass here with sg pass like this 
and then inside of here we can say that the action of this pass is equal to our state dot pass action like this okay and then we can do sg end pass to end the current pass and then we can do sg commit to commit all of this for the end of the frame so now we can do our long compilation command here and i did forget to define I did forget to define so-called graphics impul, but I believe I can just do so-called impul and it will implement all of the ones that are below it. So let's go ahead and try that again. And I was right, that's good. So now we can just run our build slash main file here. Or, and I did get a an issue with the instruction here. So there was one thing I forgot. I have to, you have to add the swap chain here, which is equal to exclude swap chain. Um, so that was a, a missed part of this. Let's go ahead and now try to run this. There was one thing that I forgot. Um, I forgot to add the swap chain to the begin pass here. Um, so let's go ahead and add that and then run the command again. And then we can run our build main. And now we have a nice clear color. Okay, and then just the final touches here. I'm just going to add a little make file here just to make things a little bit nicer. And then instead of directly running our command like this every single time, we'll just create a default command that has that inside of it. So like this, and I'll make another command that CDs into build and runs main like this with prime run for me because I'm on Linux and I want hardware acceleration. And so now we don't need all this. Now the process just looks like running make and then running make run. And now we have our program like that. So that about ends the video for today. We were able to get a window open and a color on the screen, which is awesome stuff. Um, in the next video, we're gonna be getting a triangle on the screen, which is essentially the graphics programming equivalent of the Hello World program. Now that does involve implementing the entire graphics pipeline, which is pretty much the hardest part of this entire project, um, but we'll get through it and it's totally doable inside of a single video. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and if you really enjoyed it, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.